Now we're going to be changing a percent to a fraction or mixed number. This is 11e. We've got four previous videos for this lesson. So if you become lost or confused, you need to go back, click the description for the links, and watch those previous videos. And the word percent means out of 100, 100 representing the whole thing. And to change a percent to a fraction or mixed number, we just remove the percentage sign, and that number becomes the numerator. We use 100 as the denominator. So this is fairly straightforward. 42% becomes a 42 over a 100. We can simplify this. We can divide both the numerator and denominator by 2. Remember, when simplifying, reducing to its lowest terms, they have to be divided by the same number, okay? So we get 21 fiftieths. If we have 342%, well, that just becomes 342 over 100. We can simplify that to 3 and 42 hundredths, with, which then simplifies to 3 and 21 fiftieths. See? So it's real easy. You just take away the percentage sign, write it as the numerator, put 100 as the denominator, and then simplify it. Okay? If we're converting percents that have fractions or decimal parts, there's going to be some extra steps. So if you have 27 and 3 11 percent, well, we write the 27 and 3 11 as an improper fraction. So that means we have to do 27 times 11 plus the 3, and then that's the numerator over that 11 denominator, right? So we have to do 27 times 11 plus 3. Well, that comes out to 297 plus the 3 is 300. It's going to be over our current denominator, 11. Now we need to divide it by 100. So we're dividing that 300 elevenths by 100 by multiplying it times 1 over 100, 1 one hundredth, right? Because we're dividing it, the way to divide is you multiply it and you turn this into a fraction by writing it over 1. And then when we change this to multiplication, this gets flipped around to its reciprocal as 1 one hundredth, right? We did, we did that already, okay? We already learned about this. Now, we've got 300 elevenths times 1 one hundredth. And we can see right here, we can do some cross-canceling, can't we? There's 1 one hundred here, so we write, cross it out and write a 1. There's 3 one hundredths here, so we make that a 3. We get a 3 as our numerator, and 11 times 1 is 11. We get 3 elevenths, see? By cross-canceling, we save some time. We would have had 300 over 1,100. And then we would have had to reduce again. But by cross-canceling, we save some precious time that we have to do on the test. Okay? So 27 and 3 elevenths percent equals 3 elevenths as a fraction. Okay? I know this can be confusing and might be hard to remember. So you might have to take notes. This is for when there are fraction or decimal parts to a percentage. So take some notes and write down what I did and the order that we did it in so that when you do it, you have something to reflect on, okay? So we can also change percents that have decimal parts by changing the percent to a decimal. Then you move the decimal point two hops to the left. Then you change the decimal to a fraction, and then you reduce it to the lowest terms. So we have 7.25%. We take away that percent sign. We move the decimal point two hops to the left, one, two. We had to add a zero as a placeholder because the decimal ended up way over here with an empty space. That gives us 0 0.0725, and remembering your place values for decimals, that puts us at 10,000, that fourth place from the decimal, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So we have 725 ten thousandths. We don't use commas and fractions, right? So it's just a ten with four zeros, all right? Now some calculators have special keys to change percents to fractions. To change 250 percent to a fraction, we would enter the two, the five, the zero, ignore the percentage sign, and we press the fraction key. It's an A with a little B slash C. And on the Casio FX260 that you're going to be using, it's right here, the one that they lend you for the test. So if you look, you'll see the shift key, and then you'll see it right here. It's an A with a B slash C. Okay? So you can push that. After you enter the 250, you push that key, then enter 100 for 100 and the equal sign, 
And depending on the calculator, you'd have to read the instructions for each calculator, but depending on the calculator, you might see a 2 and a backwards L, and then a 1 and a backwards L, and then a 2, which means 2 and a half. Okay? So that would be on a calculator, all right? And like I say, they're not all the same, unfortunately. So it depends on the calculator you have if it's going to work out this way or not, or if it's going to have a display like that, okay? If we want to look at a chart that has decimals, fractions, and percents, we have 0.28, which is 28 hundredths. So we can write it as a fraction as 28 hundredths. And we can simplify it to 7 25ths. It's also 28% because we just move this decimal point and put a percentage sign on, don't we? For 0.184, this is 184 thousandths, what we're doing is we're writing it as a fraction, 184 over 1,000, and we can divide this by 2 and the denominator by 2 and get 92 five hundredths and then divide both of them by 2 and get 46 two fiftieths. then divide them by 2 and get 23 120 fifths. Or we could just find the largest number. We can reduce over and over again, which does work. This will give you the right answer, but you're taking up precious time. You could also find the largest factor that they have in common, like an 8. That's the greatest common factor. You'll go faster. If we had just divided by 8, we would have had 23 one twenty fifths right away. Now, here's what's cool about this. Either way, it's going to be the right answer, okay? But if you took this 2 and this 2 and this 2 and multiplied them together, 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So when you multiply these together, you get an 8. It's the same thing as 2 to the third power. It means you're going to multiply 2 to itself three times. That's the 8 there. Isn't that something? We're going to get into that when we get more into exponents, but I wanted to show that to you, all right? And even the 28 one-hundredths, we divided, we could have divided it by 2 and then had to divide it by 2 again, or we could just divide it by 4 and go quicker to 7 25ths, see? So look at this. If we have 9 81ths, we could divide each of these by 3 and then get 3 27ths and then divide it by 3 again and then finally get 1 9th. And 3 times 3 is 9. See? 3 to the second power equals 9. 3 times 3. We could have just divided both of them by 9 and gone right to 1 9th. See? So if you want to save some time, try to find the largest factor that they have in common. That's the greatest common factor, that GCF you might have heard about. Okay? The greatest common factor is going to help you save some time. And if you save 30 seconds on every single problem, that could add up to 5-10 minutes during the whole test that you'll have on other problems. Okay? So now you should be ready to do that skill focus on page 135. And it's going to have a chart like this that you need to fill in and use the information that we did in this video and the last few videos to help you, okay? And remember that Lesson 13D, in a couple lessons from now, we're going to learn about calculators and percentages, okay? Our next video is going to be Using Proportions with Percents, 11F. And if you need more help, I have these links to the previous videos for Lesson 11 and Grade 6 and Algebra 1 videos that talk about percentages, okay? All right, we're going to continue on, and we're going to do the last lesson, Lesson 11F, before we move on to Lesson 12, okay? So keep trying, keep going, and I'll see you next video. And hit the like button if this helped you. It helps the algorithm for YouTube to know that my videos are helpful, all right? Bye.